Thank you. Thanks for joining everybody. It's a beautiful day outside, but we're inside and we're going to show you what we can do with some doughs. So today I'm just going to put together an easy everyday white bread dough. But I want to talk a little bit about bread and um, the history and a little bit more about um, the different sorts of flour and the chemistry behind bread making. So bread making has been around for centuries, as you know, and bread is basically um, a flour made from a grain with water and salt. So that's just a basic dough. And as um, you know, time has passed, we've become a bit more refined in our bread making. So we start adding a little bit of sugar and maybe a bit of bread improver and um, different things like that to make bread more palatable to different people. Uh, a lot of people buy their bread now from a supermarket or from a hot bread shop, but I'm finding people are coming full circle again now to cut out additives and preservatives on making their own bread. So basically flour or um, a wheat flour is made up of starch and protein. And you've got two proteins, you've got your gliden and your gluconin. Now, when they're mixed together, they form gluten, which makes your bread stretch and rise. Now, when we add yeast to a bread, uh, the yeast feeds on the starch part of the um, flour, which is basically converted into a, a sugar. Now, um, the, the sugar then gets eaten by the yeast and the yeast produces um, ethanol and, um, oh, what's the other thing? Um, uh, well, it's, it's a sugar and it's, it's maltose. So it breaks it down into a very simple sugar. And the fermentation product in that is what makes the bread rise. Anyway, I'll stop talking and we'll start making bread. So what I'm, I've done, I've already got the recipe up. So it's an easy day, easy everyday white bread. And I've put the yeast and the water in here to warm up. Now that's been in here for two minutes. Now, all we're going to do now is add the other ingredients. So you'll find this recipe on cookie dough. <coughs> so we've got our yeast, our water, it's warmed up. And then we've got some grapeseed oil. Just got 20 grams in here. We're going to add our baker's flour. Now baker's flour is higher protein than normal cake making flour. So higher protein means more gluten once it's mixed with water. So you get a stretchier product. So I just tip that in. We add salt. Now salt actually retards the activity of yeast. So you always put that in after your flour. You don't actually put it in contact with the yeast straight away. Two teaspoons of salt. Now, this recipe asks you to put in a bread improver. Now, bread improver, when you buy it commercially from the shops, Sometimes it's a little bit dodgy what it has in it. It can have soy flour, it can have ascorbic acid, emulsifiers, humectants. So sometimes people want to do away with using those ingredients. You can buy natural um, bread improvers, or you can just add a little bit of apple cider vinegar or a bit of extra gluten flour. You can buy gluten flour from health food shops and some specialty grocers. And that adds a little bit more elasticity to your dough because it's higher protein, so obviously more, more gluten activity. Um, I'm not going to put that in today, but I am going to put in malt powder. Now, malt powder isn't the milk mixture that you normally get when you go to the supermarket. Malt powder is actually a sprouted grain. So either barley or wheat, soak it in water overnight, and then you leave it at room temperature for 12 hours and it will start to sprout. Once it's sprouted, you completely dry it out so it's, um, it's, it's hard again, like the original grain, and then you mill it up in the thermomix. So that then becomes the food for your yeast. So it's a completely natural product. So I'm just going to put in one teaspoon 
of the malt powder. Don't know whether you can see that. It just looks like looks like yeast, but it's a, a malt powder. So we're going to pop that in. Now this is going to need for six minutes. So I'm going to get um, Heather to flip back now while this needs because it'll be a bit noisy and then we'll just go on to someone else making something. Thanks, Kathy. Did you buy the malt powder at the supermarket? No, I made it. You made it? Yes. So I sprouted wheat grains. Oh, sorry. I might have been replying to a customer. <laughs> sorry. No, of course nice. you did. All <laughs> right. We'll, we'll pass over to Jodie to um, yeah. show her tips about pizza. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name's Jodie and I'm part of the Wonderful Heroes team. Thank you so much for joining us today. Like Heather said, um, I have used my dough for, um, I'm going to make some pizza bases. So this is a dough um, in a thermo mat. So you can actually buy this from our wonderful mix shop. Um, it's very handy to have. So I made the dough in the thermo mix. Then I wrapped it in the um, thermo mat and I let it prove for about 40 minutes. Um, the great thing about the dough is the fact that you can leave it just 20 minutes if you're in a, in a bit of a hurry, um, or you can leave it that, that whole hour, and obviously you get a bit more dough by um, leaving it the whole hour. Um, I've split the dough into two. Um, if you use the whole amount of the dough for one pizza base, it is quite thick, um, and I like it a little bit thinner. You can actually get three pizzas out of it if you wanted it to go a little bit further. Um, I love making my own pizza bases um, for the fact that it's cheaper, um, you know, exactly what you're putting into your dough. Um, so behind me here we've got the baker's flour, the yeast, added some water, some sugar and a little bit of oil. So it's additive and preservative free. Um, it's great. I have a seven-year-old and he helps me make pizzas all the time. So it's family friendly um, and it tastes pretty delicious. So I'll roll, roll this dough out now. Um, and like I said, you can sort of um, roll it as thick or as thin as you want it to be. Um, sometimes my pizzas aren't round. Sometimes they go a bit odd shape, and that's okay too. Um, I don't know that there's any hard, fast rule that pizzas have to be round. Um, I'm a bit creative with them, I guess. Um, and then what I've done, I, um, I've just grabbed what I had in the fridge out. So I'm going to make a vegetarian pizza today. Um, but I guess the beauty of your homemade pizzas um, is that you can throw whatever you've got. So, you know, if you, if you shop a day the next day, and you can just, you know, sort of grab out what you've got, some vegetables, or you've got some ham or some chicken or whatever it may be. Um, so I've ro rolled the dough out there. I'm going to add a little bit of... Um, a little bit of oil um, that just saves the dough from drying out and my little trick is that I actually place the dough with a little bit of cheese on the top um, in the oven for a couple of minutes um, I won't do that today and the reason I do that is just give it a minute or two for the dough to rise and then if you've got things like pineapple and those things that can be a bit damp on the dough um, it prevents that from happening so um, another great thing about making your own pizzas is they're really cost effective. So, you know, and, and it's a time saver as well. So you let your dough prove, you know, sort of for 40 minutes and then you only have to chuck it in the oven for about 10 minutes. So um, sometimes if you order a pizza online, it can take up to an hour to be um, delivered. So I like that it's a cost saver as well. Um, so for the ingredients that I've used here today, I think my pizza would have cost about $6. So um, yeah, a bit of a saving. If you've got a large family and you're buying a few pizzas, um, that can be up to about $100 um, in, in pizzas. So you can get a few pizzas from the dough um, and you're probably only looking around $20 for a couple of pizzas, which is really cool. Um, so I'll sprinkle some cheese on the top and then I'm going to pop that in the oven and then we'll see what that looks like when it's done. Thanks, Heather. Amazing. Thank you, Jody. Kathy, yours will still be needing, I guess, won't it? It is, yeah. That's okay. So what we'll do, we might move on to, oh, actually, can I show you a couple of images first before we move on to Meg? Let me just see if you can see this. I thought I'll show you some pictures of some other things that we've made. Oh, Kathy, 
Do you want to share about the need, the proofing in the bowl? Are you still there? No? Where'd you go? Yeah, I'm here now. <laughs> well, this particular recipe tells you to, if you got me. Um, I think because I'm sharing the screen, we can't see you, but we can hear you. Okay, no worries. All right, as long as you can hear me. Um, it's still needing the background, so hopefully that's not too noisy. Actually, this, we, might, we might come back to you after it's finished needing, sorry. Okay, no worries. I, I mean, I'll just stop it. I'll just stop it now anyway. It's anyway okay. Okay. Yeah. So this recipe actually tells you to take the dough out when it's finished kneading and put it in an oiled bowl. But really to save washing up, it's perfectly fine to leave it in the thermomix bowl. The, the dough comes together quite nicely and sits over the blades. So I use a spray oil and just spray the insides of the bowl and under the lid and just put the lid back on and put a piece of paper towel or a clean tea towel over the top just to stop the top of it drying out and it, it'll double in size depending on the weather an hour um, hour and a half and once you see the dough start to come out of the top it's ready to do your second knead and uh, so you just go to the next step in your cookie dough recipe and knead the dough take it out and from there it's virtually shaping it to the size that you want to fit the tin that you're going to bake it in um, I've used the yeah, so that's the Thermomix um, bread tin. It does come with a lid if you wanted to do a smaller loaf. But why I've done that in two balls, I weighed the dough, I halved it, rolled it into two balls and just popped it straight in that tin. Now, when you make homemade bread, it goes stale really quickly, obviously, because it has no preservatives or additives in it. So one of the things I've found, if, if you do a, a loaf like that, you can cut it through the center and take your slices from the center to the outside so that you can push the loaf back together again and it stops the moisture escaping and you'll get a couple of days out of it before it dries out. But as you know, with dry bread, you can always do something else. You can make crackers, croutons, breadcrumbs, make bread and butter pudding, toasted sandwiches, chicken stuffing, all sorts of things. So it's a good basic bread and it makes great bread rolls as well. I did take that out of the tin at the end of the cooking and pop it back in for another five minutes, which firms up the crust um, on the bottom. That's just the way I like it. But if you like nice soft bread, just take it out of the tin and let it cool completely before slicing. Because if you slice while it's warm, that, that causes all of the moisture to come out as steam and you end up with stale bread really quickly. I think that's enough for me at the moment. It looks amazing. Thank you. And before we move past Jodie's pizzas, I wow. thought I'd share some photos. I think most of these are eggs and some are yours, Kathy. And you mentioned yes. that that's the pizza dough that you cooked on a barbecue plate or a flat hot plate? Um, me? I just made some flat, some flat, bread. flat, flat bread, yeah. So I just roll that out and pop that on, an, uh, on a pizza stone, actually, and... Mm. And that just crispied up like that. Yeah, it looks amazing. And some of Meg's pizzas there, I think. And oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> stop it. I'll stop sharing. And um, I will pass to the lovely Meg. Hey, can you hear me or am I unmuted? Yes. Cool. Okay, so I'm doing the brunch bread that you can get in the Simply Delicious um, cookbook. Um, so we'll get started. So we've already done the bread, which is the fir uh, the dough, sorry, which is the first part of the recipe. So basically we're getting on to the fifth step, which is um, assembling it. Um, so you want to roll it out on your mat, which is great because it's actually got the measurements on it. So you can sort of roughly get the idea of how wide it's going to be. Um, one step in it is chopping, is, uh, chopping your cheese. So we've already done that already. So that's all ready to go. So we're just going to assemble it. So you just want to assemble it, keeping a two centimetre width around the edge. You can add all sorts of things. There is a good variation at the actual bottom of the recipe um, to turn it into um, an eggy brunch bread. So basically you would crack uh, I think it's two to three eggs 
um, and then roll that up in it as well. So that's a nice alternative. You could do a bacon and egg one uh, um, and cheese for breakfast. Okay, so we've done the baby spinach with um, some ham, uh, some bacon, sorry. Uh, we're gonna add some sun-dried tomatoes. Um, some boccanini. I got the little baby boccanini um, only because it's a lot easier to um, put inside. It doesn't, it's not as big and harder to actually roll. Okay, and some cheese. Now, one good thing about this is because we, we're not actually showing you how you can make um, the scrolls, but this is a great way to actually make scrolls as well. So I'll get to that in a second. But what you want to do is lift your edge up and start to fold over. I want to stand up here. Sort of holding it in. It can get a little bit grubby, but it's okay. You've got that two centimeter edge there. So you're going to roll that right to the edge, keeping it nice and tight. Okay, so now you've formed your, your log. <coughs> <laughs> and this is where you can turn it into your scroll. So if anyone's got one of these, you can get these from the mix it shop. There, it's a little cutter. Um, you can cut them because you don't want to actually cut your mat. Once you've cut your mat, it's destroyed because there's fibers in there that can actually be quite harmful. So never use a knife on your um, thermo mat. Use something like this. It's a nice hard plastic. So when you're cutting them, about two centimeters, if you're going to do a scroll, um, two, two, three centimeters, um, and then place them on your um, tray. Um, so you can get like a tray like this one um, or just a flat tray. You could also turn it into a pull apart, which is another one and using your spring form tin, um, placing them around your bowl. Um, so that way when it comes out, you just release it and it's still in a nice circle um, to have there. But because we're doing the brunch bread, I'm going to show you what you want to do is bring it around, whoops, got some escapees. Bring it around into a circle and you want as nicely, if you can see, stuff the end in the other end, like so. Make it nice and secure. We don't have any splits. Once you've done that, with a little bit of a pull so we've got it nice and even. Using your egg, a, a beaten egg, you want to just like run that around the edges. Gives it a nice golden effect when you've actually cooked it. All the way around. And then to make it a little bit decorative, you've got your little uh, sesame seeds and just scatter those on top, like so. And then you can lift that off, place it onto your tray. And then we'll bake that in the oven. Um, I've lost my time. 20 minutes, is it? 20 minutes, yep. So we'll put that in the oven for 20 minutes. Amazing. Oh, thanks, Meg. Let's have a look at when you prepared earlier. <laughs> the finished product. How, look, how good does that look? It's just incredible. All right. Thank you. Great job. And now, just for something different, I'm going to find Tracy. All right, Trace. Yeah. Oh, there you are. That helps. <laughs> Let's um, hand over to Tracy to show you something that you can use on your pizzas. Thanks, Heather. Hi, everyone. Um, as Heather said, my name is Tracy and I'm part of the amazing Hamilton Heroes team as well. So today I'm going to um, start to cook some caramelised onions. 
So this is using the high heat feature that's um, unique to the TM6. So you can use this feature to do um, something sweet. So you can make um, honeycomb as well, which is absolutely delicious. I think it was the first thing that most of us made when we got our TM6. I couldn't wait to get home and unpack it and get that honeycomb sorted. Um, but we can also use it to do our um, searing with our onions and other vegetables, etc. So there's quite a few um, recipe collections on Cookie Do. So one is the high heat basic vegetables that you can see there. Uh, there's one here, basic onions. So that includes leeks <laughs> as well in that and um, meats and seafood. So there's also lots of other recipes in other collections that will automatically um, just default to the high heat mode. So I'm just gonna go to my week where I've got it saved to cook today. So a caramelized onion. So as Heather said, this is something that you can use on your pizzas or in your scrolls or um, in like a bread. You could make a feta and caramelized onion bread if you like. So we place 20 grams of oil to our bowl. Hi. And then throw in our onions. So I did chop these earlier. Now, when we're using the high heat mode, excuse my dog, every time I'm on a Zoom meeting for work, or she always has a go at having fun, so excuse her. Um, now, when we're doing our searing with our onions, we do need to chop them into the wedges if the recipe calls for that. So that's to allow for that white, that bigger surface to actually sear and brown up nicely into, in the thermo mix. So we've got four to 500 grams of onions there and our splash guard, which we need to try and put on. So this is the splash guard, which comes with your TM6. Um, and I'm just gonna start them off. So they're gonna sizzle away there for 20 minutes. And I think, We'll let them go and um, Heather's going to move on to someone else now and we'll come back and see the finished product. Amazing. Thank you, Trace. Kathy, is your dough ready to pop out of the bowl or not yet? I, I'm leaving it in the bowl. Oh, of course you are. Finished, yeah. yeah, of course. No worries. Um, I, I, I meant to ask a question before we start. Let me see. Uh, no, it's going to do it in the wrong order. That's okay. Um, what we'll do, we will pass on to Kerry, except my computer's just doing strange things. Kerry, where are you? There. So let's um, get you to unmute. Yep. I think you're good. Okay. Okay. Now, hopefully you can see everything because I've set up in a different, different way today. So it's not so glary and things. So welcome everybody. Um, thanks for joining us this afternoon. Uh, so what I'm going to show you is the um, bacon and cheese rolls. So some of you probably get them from the Baker's Delight or Coles or things like that. And you probably know they are quite expensive at Baker's Delight. Right? Um, but so we're going to do them today. Now I've already done my dough. Um, my dough is a little bit different to the um, pizza dough. It's much the same, but you're just adding that um, bread improver. Um, now, as I said, I've already done them. Now, what? One part of the process, um, towards the end here, where it says to um, shape your rolls and put them sort of close together. You can get either six or 12, really depends on, on the sizing. But you'll see mine, I actually, I'm not really, I don't really do them particularly amazing. I just sort of do a ball. But what I do do is I weigh each ball on there before I pop it down. So I know that they're sort of going to take around the same time to cook. So I just I just weigh them on my thermometer. Um, so I pop them in here. Now you can put do it any way that you like. Um, I did this the other day um, and it turned out looking like a butterfly. So I've just done it the same sort of thing. Hopefully it turns out the same because my son gets quite excited about that. So um, the next step it asked me to do is to um, just cut your um, rolls at the top. Just um, like this, just a little bit with a sharp knife. Top. I just do it the one way, and then you're just gonna brush them with a, a egg wash. Uh, you could score them like across 
across it. One way, just one, one way. And look, I'm just really quick and easy. Now, what I have got this onto a my beautiful um, large rose gold tray, which I love because, um, and I use it with the silicon mats. So we've got all the liners that fit into each size of our trays. And these are great because I don't have to use baking paper and they just wash really easily. So love them. So now what I'm going to do, because this recipe isn't a cookie do, it's a recipe community um, one. So you have it, you do it all manually. Now, what I do need to do next is the next part of it is the chopping of the cheese and the bacon. So I'm grating the cheese and the bacon. Oh, nearly dropped it. So this is another great um, board that I use a lot from the mix shop. So I just cut it all. You can cut everything and then you just scoop it like that and you can put, scoop it into the Thermomix or if it's scratch, you can just um, pop it into thin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grate my cheese first. So I usually try and do about three or four centimetre blocks just to try and cut the your blades. Look, in the recipe, it actually doesn't give you an amount of cheese to grate. So I think I did about 200 or something. And if there's anything left over, then I just pop it in the fridge already grated. Now, in your basic cookbooks, it'll tell you your speed on what you should grate cheese for. I've actually got mine um, already in my, um, oops, under my bookmarks, because I do this a lot. And I keep, instead of having to go back to the book all the time, I just go into my grated cheese and I just start cooking. I just put in whatever I want to put in and then I just up to speed seven. Okay. So if you're like me, once I get a block of cheese from the shops, I usually do big batches like this and just keep it in the fridge so it's already grated so I don't need to do it all the time. And obviously by grating your own cheese is a lot cheaper plus it doesn't have the anti-caking agents and things that grated cheese does have um, when you buy it from the shops. Okay, so that's my grated cheese. Now the next bit is bacon. And again, in the recipe, it doesn't actually say how much. So I think I've just got it about 150 or something like that, just whatever I've got. Now, in the recipe, it does say to chop it up into bits so you can sprinkle it on your, um, on your rolls. But for me, I can be bothered chopping it up. I just chop big chunks like that, throw it into the Thermomix, and I'm actually just going to blitz it. So that blitz, and... I just got to speak seconds. But you only need a few seconds. So I've just done it more or less the same speed that I did the cheese, which was seven seconds. I'll speak seven. And it's sort of like this. So, oh, there's another, there is a big bit in there. I might just do that little bit again. So I've only did So maybe three seconds. That way it saves me chopping it and it just go it'll it just sits flatter on your dough rather than bits falling off. So that's it there. Now the way I do that too, I do that with my pizzas. Instead of like chopping things, I will actually get some some ham, I'll throw it in, some cherry tomatoes, some pineapple, some mushrooms, whatever I want, and then I'll turn it up to about, I think I only do a speed five or six, and then I just spread it all over the pizza. And then I pop the grated cheese on top. So I just, I'm just i just saving so much time. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to pop the um, bacon on. Now, this is where I am just like, I usually just use my hand, really, um, but I'll just pop it all on the top. Actually, I might just use my hand. Sorry, they are clean and I'm eating them. So, oh, no, I'm not. My son is because I can't eat them, but... Now my son is four and a half and he absolutely loves these. So, and they freeze really well. So I do these and then I'll just freeze them. And then when he wants a snack, this is it. So, so there you go. It's not really that pretty, like, but it does come out. It's just easier. So that's that. And then you're just gonna sprinkle your cheese over the top. So therefore you can sort of, you can use as much cheese or as less cheese as you, as you want. So it's all about how much you want to do. 
I'll find the picture of your finished one, Kerry, to show as well. They look great. Yeah. I know, like it's so easy. Like I said, I'm just all about quick. Just get it on there and really quick. And and um, so there you can sort of see it there. Can you see those? Yeah. Before so, we move past you as well, can you share about which your favourite gluten-free recipes, please? Oh, yes. So because I'm gluten um, intolerant, I, as I said, these will be for my son, but I eat, do a lot of my own gluten-free breads. Um, and my absolute favourite, if you have someone that's gluten-free or you're gluten-free yourself, it's on Cookie Do. Uh, you will need to change your filters to overseas because I think it's a, it's a UK or USA, one of those. I think it's UK. And it's called the Gluten-Free Artisan Loaf. And for those of my customers that are on here will have seen me um, post it on my Facebook page. It is definitely one of the best gluten-free breads I've tasted ever. Like, it is just fantastic. So, um, and it's really easy, very easy. So, look, have a look at that recipe and give it a go. Um, so, you know, I used to do it every now and then. And then I'd go to the shop and buy a gluten-free loaf. And then I'm like, you know what? It's just, this, my bread is so much better. And um, again, it freezes well, but it stays really fresh for a few days, even though it has no preservatives in it. So that's definitely my favourite. Um, so I think Heather's shared that in the, in the um, chat. Link. Yeah. Um, then there's another one on the recipe community. Um, again, another manual one, but it's called the Paleo Super Soft Rolls. Um, so these are fantastic um, and they are really, really nice bread rolls. Um, again, I think Heather might yeah, share that link. Um, so if you're looking for some bread rolls, they're easy. It's just like lots of um, seeds. Now, um, it does ask for like coconut flour and coconut oil. And it is nice with that. But sometimes I just take that coconut out and I just use the normal gluten-free flour. And um, the brunch bread that Meg has just made, she's actually done that in that super soft paleo um bread rolls recipe but as the brunch bread and it was absolutely amazing so yeah so there is some great options for um gluten-free baking as well um uh, around or on cookie food so yeah that's awesome thank you Kerry and I'll make sure I share those links with the others as well yes I might I think I can see Jody's pizza ready I'm going to ask you to unmute lovely and I'll spotlight you oh you might be at the, you might be right oh no there you go I can see your pizza. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, I popped the pizza in for 10 minutes and then I just put it in for another two. It wasn't quite ready. Um, so I don't know if you can see that, but so quick and easy. Like, you know, those nights, like, what am I going to have for dinner? Like, you just, you know, whip the dough up in the thermi, um, let it prove, chuck your toppings on, whatever you've got in your fridge. Pop it in the oven um, for 12 minutes and, you know, you've got dinner ready and you've saved so much money. Um, like I was saying earlier, you know, $100 for a few pizzas. Um, imagine the savings, you know, for your, for your um, interest-free repayment on your thermomix, the, you know, the $24 per week. Um, you know, you're saving that on, on fake away. But, yeah, here's a pizza finish and I've cut a slice um, and you can sort of see the thickness of that. So if you wanted it a bit thinner or a little bit thicker, that's sort of a bit of a gauge. Um, the other thing that you could do with that other half, if you wanted to, that I forgot to say earlier, um, you could roll it out and just put some garlic um, and some rosemary and make like a herb bread if you wanted to pair with your pizza. Um, or that's another um, use of your dough as well. Sometimes I'll just um, roll out the dough, um, pop some garlic and rosemary on it and pop it in the um, oven and then just have it with some hummus, make some hummus or something. So it's great when you're entertaining. So, yeah, ta-da! <laughs> Thanks, Emma. Thanks, Joe. Now, before, before we move on, I, I meant to share some of these other pictures before. So let me just get the right screen. I'm a bit slack on the, the sharing. If you remember the lovely Meg who made the picnic, the brunch bread, these are some of her images, some of her other bread cooking so you can see she's done some sweet breads she does the fancy plats and all sorts of things this was a um a great dip it was four different dips that were baked into a, a, yeah i don't know what the recipe is called we'll have to find it some great scrolls and these colored bread she's colored with um meg was it beetroot juice and spinach i think was what it was so they look beautiful what a great thing to do with the kids if you've got them home homeschooling that would be almost like a science experiment, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, these are some of Tracy's, and that's a, a gluten-free bread on the left. 
And this is Kerry's butterfly. <laughs> and the bottom left picture there is the gluten-free artisan bread. And really quick, quickly before we move on, when Kerry mentioned chopping her toppings for pizza, so that's what she's done. She's thrown in all of those things. And on the right-hand side, she's got the things ready just to go straight on the pizza and top with some cheese. And it's especially good for kids because they don't really know. They can't yeah. see those big chunky vegetables like the zucchini and that. Yeah, brilliant. Great tip, Kerry. And um, thank you. And we're going to hand you over to the lovely Lindsay for a special treat. Uh, Lindsay. Um, just going to... I'm just gonna unmute myself. Um, so my name is Lindsay. I think I'm one of the newer Team Hero members um, to join. Loving it. Um, I'm today making the Pull Apart Pizza Sun. It's um, one of the recipes that's highlighted in our Creating Something Incredible cookbook. But um, this cookbook isn't fully on Cookie Do yet. Um, they have released the book and allowed it a couple of months before everybody gets access to the recipes. However, this has been posted in the first half. Um, so it is on Cookie Do and it is um, there for guided cooking, but also in the book. Um, so I've just gone ahead and I've made my dough already and my fill-in. Um, the recipe calls for ham. However, I'm vegetarian, so I've changed it up a little bit myself. Um, I've popped in here some spinach, some onion and mushrooms. Um, it also has sun-dried tomato, mozzarella and parmesan. So we're going to get started. Um, you start by just popping one third of the mixture to make the dome in the middle. It is a bit messy hands, but worth it in the end, I guess. I'm just going to pop it there. Um, you can use a, like a little cup or a dome to, to make it yourself, but it's just as quick and saves in dishes if you just do it like that. So that pops in the middle. And then we're going to make like a, like a circle edge um, to go around the outside. You leave a little bit, like maybe a one centimeter piece, um, just so we're going to be able to join the top and bottom doughs together. Um, hold on. Um, also, as Meg mentioned, I am going to be cutting this dough. So I have put a little um, chopping board underneath my silicone mat to make sure that I protect that. But my handy tip is that I have rolled my dough out with the, the cooking dough, the cooking board on top. So I can see what roughly what the 30 centimeter um, diameter is. Sorry, so I'm going to do this. Um, I was trying to think of different variations that we could do. Um, so the recipe is ham, 120 grams of ham. It does suggest in the tips down the bottom to use artichoke, but that's currently not in the supermarket at the moment. So I have tried this with just mushrooms. Um, and then, as I said, today we're doing a bit of a mixture. So mushrooms, spinach, um, what else did I put in it? Onions, cheese. I'm not sure what anyone else would pop, pop in. Pre-cooked chicken maybe. All right, messy hands for sure. And it comes out really beautiful. So it's a nice piece to do if you're having a barbecue or lunch picnic. I guess we'll be able to go on picnic soon. So add it to the list. I'm going to fill it up a little bit. Now, all right. I just want to quickly rinse my hand. Yeah, so this is the top piece. I've rolled it out. Um, make sure when you're doing it that you do have your baking paper underneath. Um, when I made it recently, I didn't, and I had a struggle transferring it through to um, my rose gold pizza tray. Ooh. Bit of a nightmare. All right, so we're popping it. We're making sure that all the edges are fishing. I'm gonna try and do some mending. This part, just pop the dough over and just push down on the dome on the outside. Now, we're going to grab our fork and just add a little bit of flour to it so it doesn't catch on the dough and just push down, push down 
on the outside. I'm gonna add a little bit more flour. Push. All the way around the edge. And then we will start All right, so we're going to be careful obviously not to cut the dome in the middle um, and we're just going to cut it into quarters and just pop this here. Might just add a little bit of flour to my knife. And then again into eight, and then again into 16. Move my egg. And just. Um, so yeah, this is this is a great one um, to do. You can do it any variation of filling. Um, obviously, with cookie dough, it guides you through every single step, so it makes it really easy. But I'm just going to grab it. So you grab each piece and you just turn it a 90 degree angle, and you leave your little mixture exposed. Oh, sorry, this is the piece I just. <laughs> Damaged a little bit, so just going to do working. Sorry, Lindsay. What we might do—that's brilliant. It's such a great dish. Um, are you happy if we move on to Cheryl and come back and see? Yeah, I'll dish. keep going with these, and then yeah, I'll pop back to show you what it looks like before I pop it in the oven. Amazing. Thank you. Now I just need to find Cheryl. All right, Cheryl. There. Hi. Hi. Can you see my head? There we go. All good. All good? Yeah? All good. All right. So I'm going to be, hi, I'm Cheryl. I'm one of the fabulous members of Heather's great team, um, the Hamilton Heroes. And what I'm going to show you is the um, pizza pockets, which I um, was one of the first things I made when I got my Thermomix because I found it really great to make for my kids for school lunches. Um, once again, it's just a basic pizza dough. And what you, you do is you divide the, the dough into 16 pieces, which I've just used a combination of my um, spatula, which is a really great tool there to cut. Um, and then also the, um, the scraper, which is very versatile as well. So it's just a matter of um, rolling out one of the one of the balls and then just adding your filling. So this recipe is from Cookie Do. It's just if you just Google pizza pockets, um, and once again, it can just be a variety of different um, toppings, whatever you've got on hand. And for mine, I'm just using the tomato onion herb, um, base. Um, and then with a little bit of meat and cheese. So this particular recipe uses parmesan and mozzarella, which is a really nice combination. Um, and then with, with the base, I've actually, in the recipe, it just says to chop the onion and garlic. But what I've actually done is then taken it, um, come out of the recipe and then cooked the onion and garlic for two minutes just to, so it's a little bit, um, yeah, cooked be, before it's been cooked in the oven. It just, I think it's just easier to digest, particularly for kids. Um, and then you just go ahead and use your, um, go ahead and add your other ingredients. This one has fresh tomato um, that you've de-seeded, which is really lovely, and then tomato paste and, and herbs. So you just simply 
spread that out on the on the circle and then you just start adding your toppings what I've started doing is buying my salami and my pepperoni from my local butcher who makes it themselves in house so once again you know quite often there's less preservatives than that in in these cured meats a um, little bit of pepperoni and then the ham and then as you can see the lovely mixture of the freshly grated um, parmesan and mozzarella what I find as well um, I love doing this and grating the cheese in advance and quite often I'll store it in the freezer as well um, just so that it keeps fresh and then it's just a matter of turning it over so you've got a circle and then you're folding it over in half and then it's just sealing it. Now I there's a couple of ways you can make them when I first used to make them for my kids I would just have a circle, put the mixture all in the middle and then kind of enclose them up so they'd become a ball. Um, so they look a bit like the pizza pockets that you, you know, you can buy um, in the, the frozen section of the, of the supermarket. But it really, you know, whatever, whatever works for you. So this is just what it looks like, whatever shape, just as long as it's sealed. You simply then brush it with some with some milk just to crisp up the, the pastry or the dough, pop it on a tray. So once again, I've used my Thermomix baking tray, like so, you can just bake them now. And then see, and then you cook, just then cook it in a hot oven for 10 to 15 minutes. Um, what I, what I find as well, it says 16 balls. If you wanna make bigger pizza pockets, of course you can. And it's something that you can really involve the kids in. They love, you know, creating their own um, concoctions. And I find that if they're part of um, the, the food preparation, they're more likely to eat it. Another tip as well, what I used to do was I would make them as such, and then I would put them straight in the freezer. I would just, put them in some baking paper um, in the freezer, either individually or on a whole big, um, you know, in a, in a um, Tupperware container or whatever. And then you can just bring them straight out and then cook them fresh. Um, or you can even cook them and put them straight in the freezer and then straight into the kids' lunch, lunch boxes or even anyone's lunch boxes. Um, they're, they're really good. This is the finished product ones that I made earlier so that's what it looks like it's pretty easy it's easy it's probably less messy than excuse me than than a pizza as such so if it makes a perfect picnic lunch idea if you're taking something to the beach it's a lot easier to eat and it's really yummy cold um yeah and that's that's me I think but I think it just once again, once again it, it, it lends itself to whatever you've got in your fridge um, and it's a really great recipe when rather than spending whatever you do on a on the kids lunches towards the end of the week when you've got less food in in the the fridge you can scrape together by simply doing a dough a batch of dough and a few little ingredients and whipping up some pizza pockets so that the kids have got a yummy lunch you know come Thursday or Friday or even the weekend as such. Brilliant thank you Cheryl. Can I share your other bread that you made last weekend? Can I show that quickly before we? Oh, oh yes yes that yes. was uh, that was um, fabulous. There you go. Yeah T totally totally fat free you know <laughs> it had um, 30 oh, no. 30, yeah, it was called cheeseburger garbage bread. Um, oh, do. Um, I think I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, it's from the UK World Cup um, collection. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I've ever bought so much, so many cheese slices in my life. <laughs> um, I just could feel my my veins getting filled with cholesterol as I was making it. But um, 
yeah, it had so much cheese and bacon. Um, and I bought some of that really yummy smoked maple bacon. Um, but yeah, it was, it was incredible. And actually what I've done with that as well is that because it had made these two big loaves, I couldn't even fit the whole loaf on my tray. I actually cut it up after it was cooked and I've just once again laid, laid it with um, baking paper and stuck it in the freezer so that, you know, for after a quick snack or, or whatever, um, we can just put it, take it out of the freezer, whip it in either the microwave or the oven and you've got a quick lunch or breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. Have you got a hangover? Oh. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Thanks, Cheryl. That's, yeah, that was great. It was such a different looking bread that I'd never seen before. So I'm glad that you shared yeah, it. Yeah, and it was just, um, I guess it was just similar to making hamburgers. It felt like I was doing a hamburger and you and, and with the recipe, you also do like a mayonnaise um, and then it had um, gherkins and all of that was chopped you know, in the thermomix. So it was, yeah, it was a really, really nice recipe to make. Amazing. Yeah, thank you. Um, that was great. Thanks. I think I can say Meg's yes. Yes. I just, yeah. There you go. Oh, yep. Go, Meg. Oh. Mute. Unmute. <laughs> okay. So that's our brunch bread all done. It um, looks amazing. Yeah. So you can have that for anything, like a party. <clears throat> Um, dinner that's our dinner tonight <laughs> um, but I did want to mention about the scrolls as well so in our last class um, I made the sweetened condensed milk um, and I didn't know what to use it for and my daughter has been hounding me to make blueberry scrolls so I actually did the same technique um, and I smeared my condensed milk over the top of the pastry added my blueberries rolled it into a large rock log sorry um, then chopped it up into about two three centimeter pieces and made my scrolls out of that um, they didn't last long so that's another um, simple and easy um, thing that you can make with anything that's out of your fridge or something that you want to use up you can great for doing pizzas um, add vegetables to them as well um, the kids won't know just add some cheese to it um, so yeah you could the things that you can make um, just from what's in your pantry with the pizza dough, it's amazing. It is amazing. Thank you, lovely. Um, I can see Lindsay's is ready to go in the oven, so I might jump back to Lindsay. So um, this is it when it's all ready to go in. I have just done a quick egg wash over the top. Um, it can be a bit finicky to turn the, um, the outer side 90 degrees, but it gets there in the end and it always looks beautiful. Um, I won't get time to show everybody what it looks like at the end, but just from the book, this is what it should come out like. Um, top it with your own fresh herbs of choice. Um, and yeah, then it's just pull apart. It's very easy for guests. You can dip it into whatever dips that they like. Um, it goes 10 to 15 minutes into the oven. Um, I do find depending on what filling I use um, will depend on the 10 or 15 minutes. But yeah, it's going to come out beautiful and this will be our dinner. Amazing. Thank you, Lindsay. Now, who else, who else do we need to come back to? Kathy, how's your dough going? Hang on. Yeah. Getting so there? Almost at the top already. So, yeah, so that's where we're up to. I'd say another 15, 20 minutes, and that'll be coming up out of the hole and ready to form Oh, ready to knead the second time and put into the pan and bake. Amazing. Mm. Thank you. Now, who are oh, Tracy? How are your onions? We've got you. Yep. Can you hear me? Yes. Cool. Okay. So they're done. Um, I did cook them for about another minute and a half. Um, can any? Can we see? Yep, sort of. 
Yep, they smell amazing. So after they've cooked for 20 minutes, I added 20 grams of balsamic vinegar and you can do whatever you've got in your pantry. Um, I'm minimizing my trips to the shops um, for the obvious reasons. Um, so I found a maple bourbon that I had, ma maple bourbon um, balsamic and then a bit of um, salt and then they cooked for another few minutes. So there they are. Um, last weekend, I made the cheese and tomato bread. I think it's from the new bread collection um, that's on Cookie Do. And um, I think that these tomatoes would be amazing topped on that bread as well. They would be great on a focaccia oh, sorry, or the, something um, as well. The onions, yeah. 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 Sorry, yeah. They would be great on a focaccia, like the yeah. caramelized onion and some yep. feta or something. Yeah, or like pizza, scrolls, um, yeah, or just with a spoon. They smell amazing. <laughs> that might be my dinner, actually. <laughs> they look great. Thank you, Trace. Um, yeah, beautiful. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to... Heather? Sorry, what was that? Mine have finished. Oh, thank you, Kez. Hang on, let me spotlight you. But I must admit, I put my dough for the same time um last week when i did it but i put it out in the sun on the veranda this time and oh my gosh the rolls huge so i probably could have got more out of them i don't know if it doesn't look so much like a butterfly today but once i pull them apart yeah they're, they're great so definitely if you can prove it with the warmer weather i think the the, the bread's gonna the dough's gonna be much better fruit. amazing all right i've got a couple more images to show you before we um Gosh, the time's gone quickly today. So just some other ideas for your doughs. So there's some sweet doughs here. Um, you can see the one on the left. This is a monkey bread use, make, using a brioche um, dough that's been used um, in our beautiful bump tins. You know, a fruit loaf down below and then the spiced cherry brioche wreath, for, which is amazing for Christmas. Um, some, yeah, some other great ideas here. You know, if you like pork buns, doing your steamed pork buns or, you know, your bao buns or look at that Nutella sun, star. It's not a sun, it's a star, isn't it? How great does that look? Um, yeah, and some more things there. So I did want to not forget to tell you. So you can see that there. I might stop sharing. But I hope that, I, yeah, I really hope that you've enjoyed this. I don't know if as you've been watching, you've been thinking of any friends that might have enjoyed watching this as well. Maybe you've got friends in lockdown who are cooking the hard way and they would love a Thermomix. You know, get them along to one of these or you can have your own personalised workshop. So as we're not coming into your homes at the moment, we can do this over Zoom. You know, we can pick a couple of dishes and cook with you and your friends. You can access host rewards, which... I know, I did have another image for that. Sorry, let's come back to that for a second. So you can access the Great Host Rewards. So some of the things that we've used today there are the mats. So you can access the mats and whoever has enough thermo servers. I know I still don't, I love them. So it's another way to access those. You can also access them by inviting your friends along to join you on one of these classes. So I hope that you, hope that you might do that sometime. Now, I had wanted to share cookie dew and a couple of tips there. Do we do we have some time to do that? Just a minute. I just wanted to show you how to search for the doughs, the different breads. If you maybe what we do, I'll say thank you for joining us. And if you need to dash away, um, actually, let me run this poll before we do that. And then if you'd like to stay on for just a couple of minutes, I'll show you some cookie dew tips. I don't know if you can see that poll. Has that come up? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so our aim as consultants is to help you really get the most from the investment that you've made in a Thermomix, and we love to do this. It's it's our favourite thing. It's cooking with you in, in any way. So if you let us know what you'd like to see, what you'd like help with, um, yeah, we're here to help. That's what we enjoy. And, yes, we will get back to in in-person cooking experiences sometime in the near future, hopefully. And if you would like to know more about what we do as consultants, if you've been, if your interest has been piqued today, thinking, you know, you might like to do something like this, then just get in touch with your consultant. Or um, if you don't have a consultant, 
when I email the recipes, just re reply to that and let me know that you'd like to know a little bit more about it. We have information sessions all the time, so it's, it's a really easy way to find out more about it. Are there any questions? Is there anything else that we can help you with? Uh, someone was just posting about, is there going to be a link to all the recipes in the comments? No. Yes, yes, there will be. So I've got most of them ready to go, but I'll have to just go and grab those extras that we've spoken about. And well, email? I'll email them. Yeah, it, it may not be this afternoon, just given the time of day, it might be more likely tomorrow, but I'll get them out. Absolutely. And as we've recorded this, I will share the recording into the Thrive YouTube channel. So that won't happen until um, during the week. But then if you want to rewatch something, you want to go back and catch those tips, you can always do that as well. So um, if I can really quickly screen share. Can you well, see that? Yeah, whilst you're quickly doing that, Heather, um, just to let everyone know as well, there's lots of different ideas for pizza bases um that's on cookie dough as well so instead mm -hmm. of just using the usual dough um yeah. great and flour and bread ingredients um there's lots of ones with almonds and you know that are grain free gluten free you do a really good um cauliflower one don't you is it a cauliflower yeah. or oh the chickpea yeah. and i did and i and i did a broccoli one as well that was amazing it, yeah. it, I, I don't think that was on cookie dough, but um, yeah, easy enough. Of course, yeah. I made it in the Thermomix, so easy. Yeah. So you can, you can of course, come in and just search bread. But if you were wanting to, say, make one of those sweet, um, sweet sort of scrolls or something that's more of a sweet baking, if you pick that and have your bread search on, you'll see lots of great ideas, um, you know, beautiful recipes. So that's... That's a quick way to do it. Or if you click on something that you like the look of, so you like the look of that, you can come down and look at the recipe tags and think, what is it about that dish that appeals? And you might be interested in Eastern European cooking. So then you can click on that and get some other ideas. So that's, that's a bit of a tip. Um, you can also use your filters to exclude ingredients. So you might have things at the moment that you really don't want to go to the shop for. Um, you might just want to work with what you have. So you can come in here and go, all right, well, I don't have, I'm out of eggs, but I'd like to do some baking. What can I make? So that's, yeah, that's a bit of a, a bit of a trick as well. Now, I realize we've gone over time and my apologies for that. Um, is there anything else we can help you with today? Um, if you're interested in knowing more about Cookie Do, we do have two sessions a month so the next one we'll share the link actually I'll share the link in the email for those and also you can always look and see the events that we have coming up in the branch there's something happening all the time and yeah we hope 